Hi, welcome back to your computer aided design class. And today we're going to see technical drawing uh, using a set of squares and a T square. So we need a T square, a set of squares, pencils, a liner, paper, obviously, a ruler, some masking, and an eraser. So this is a common mistake that uh, some of you make do, uh, like pasting your paper into the uh, table or, or to the board, but this is not good. Because what you must do is to use the, your T-square and align the paper with the T-square. That will help us to prevent that we are doing uh, lines that are not aligned. So we are going to align the border of the T-square with the paper. Once we have that, we can start pasting it using our masking or, or tape. And, well, just make sure that your tape doesn't clear your borders or that it is not in the way. So you, you can make it look good and that it doesn't move. That's the use of the, of the tape. So we don't have to align the T-square again. Okay, once we have that, the first thing that we have to do is to measure all of the borders of the paper, of the technical drawing. And it is commonly, well, I will use a, a red a pencil, so I can erase it later. And what I have to do is that I have to measure one centimeter or 10 millimeters from each side of the paper so I can make a square. And the reason that I use a red pencil is because later on I will use a liner. And the liner will be black, so I can erase it, or it will not, I will not get distracted by, by the color. If I use a pencil instead, maybe I can um, mistake my lines or, or something like that. So make your borders and make sure that uh, this doesn't have to you you can use your your set of squares instead of, of using the, the t square you can leave it in an horizontal way and after that you are going to, to put the title box and it will be one centimeter also with two millimeters from the top and bottom so you can align your letters. Here in the title box you're going to put your name as a designer, you're going to put the name of the company, for example, in this case it's my school, and the name of the drawing or the title of the drawing. Also don't, don't forget to put the date and at the end we're going to put an extra element. So this is very important, in order to start drawing we have to put the three axes length, height, and width or x, y, and z and we're going to be using our set of squares so the t-square is a line and it will be always horizontal we are making it uh, so we can put the squares on top and we have the three lines so notice how I use the squares so my lines will be always parallel to each other I will not have trouble like figuring out what angle should I use and the first thing that you must do is to draw a box you can make this box or this cube and then make like um, a set of squares inside of the box so you have your, your your internal elements fixed and that they will not move so what I'm doing here is that I will fit the, the part that I want to do into that box so I am measuring with my ruler what is the width of that part 
and then I will use my set of square so I can draw it. And notice that I don't mind getting far away of, of the border because later on I will use the liner. So I will measure again the dimension of, of that part. And later on when we when we put the dimensions at the drawing, we're going to know exactly what dimensions are, are we using or we are using. And seeing that part I like miss a spot, so don't worry, just fill it and then use your liner. In this case I am using a monoliner from uh, Tombow and it's a 0.1 liner. You can use a 0.3. I think it, this is a 0.3. Uh, later on I will use a 0.1. You can use a 0.3, a 0.5. And remember that the liners are used for technical drawing. And that is because the line will be always the same width. So notice that our part is appearing. That's why I used the red pencil. And after that I just have to erase. We have the part finished. After that I will go and make the views of that part. I will use the three standard views and notice that I am using like the borders of the of the part to, to get the dimensions and see that I use the highest point of, of that part so I can get the dimension correctly. Later on later on I will use the ruler to measure some, some of those parts and to finish my, my view. In, in this case we're like imagining where, where the parts are going to be. But if you want you can make your squares like in a notebook and just you just want to fill them with the parts or you can use another method like using points on all the lines that are intersecting to each other and to make those lines into your drawing and into your views to make them fit So it's really easy and what I'm going to do now is I, I am going to put the dimensions so I use now I'm using the point one liner it is a little bit specific but you can use a pen if you don't have a liner and I am using millimeters so the standard is to use millimeters or inches if you are using an American system in this case I am using the standard system Sorry, the, the international system, and if you're using the standard system, you can use inches. So I measure that with my ruler because my scale is one and one. I, later on, you will see that, and I am putting dimensions that I can that I can put in that drawing. You don't have to repeat dimensions that are already stated. Next, I will use or I will make the the other view. And see that I am like projecting those lines, so I won't be getting like different or like I am not fitting the, the, the part correctly. I am using that like as a projection to make the orthogonal views. And then what you have to do is to measure again. We have some dimensions already made. Because we have the previous view to do that. And once we finish, no, notice that all of this, these parts are coming from a square. At least all of the lines are fitting into that square. So you can use that to, to follow your measures. And what I'm doing here is I am changing the, the liner color. It's just like a decision I want to make, but you can use any color that you want. Because later on I will fill my parts with some markers. And notice that I am not repeating the dimensions that I already stated previously at the, at the other view. And I got a mistake here 
because that is not the real dimension it's 15 millimeters but uh, I use some white corrector and I will change it later and see that I am making the projection from the view and because I cannot get access to that to the isometric part and this is the easiest view of all because I already have two of them and this one will be appearing from the other two and what is left is to line it with the liner with the black liner so notice that I am not using those dimensions because I already have them and that is the view that I'm using for each one of those parts so that is the top view the lateral view and the front view and later on I will just fill all of my my double box with a liner and I put the scale that is very important because this is a like a real scale drawing and later on I will use markers to just color them and to get a better look and understanding of the parts so I use Prismacolor markers for that and I use grayscale tones and that is a P108 marker it is like the lightest gray like 10% gray and after that I use like a 30% gray 40% and to the last view to the last part I will use like an 80% gray I want to use black and this will give all of, my, of our pieces or all of our parts some beautiful finish so that is how I am using the markers I use one direction then I use the other direction so I don't get those stripes I eliminate those stripes by doing opposite direction with a marker and that's all I think with that we have our, our parts correctly done it looks good we have our title box correctly we have our dimensions and with this we have the drawing finish good job so I hope you like it and see you in another video